Hi there, and welcome to Essential Wine Gadgets to Have. Now, in a world where technology is constantly evolving, there are millions of wine gadgets and accessories out there that it's become rather confusing, especially for wine newbie, to know what you need and what you don't need. But don't worry, I've got your back because I'm here to tell you what are the essentials. Of course, then there are also some fun or good to have accessories or gadgets and you'll then be able to decide what you actually need and want. Number one on the list is a wine opener. You definitely need a wine opener unless you've absolutely resolved that you're only going to buy wines with screw caps or those secured with vino lock or similar closures. Vino what? Now, if you've been following my videos, I aim to always have at least one new thing for you to discover and learn per video, but hopefully you'll be gaining more than that. So Vino Lock is a glass bottle stopper that was released in 2004, designed specifically for wines and spirits. It's reusable, recyclable, and it's equipped with a rubber ring that's made out of EVA or ethylene vinyl acetate, which is what makes it completely inert. That means no air can pass through this and into the wine, so that keeps the wine stable. Its sleek design, coupled with its customization options, and of course the fact that it's sustainable and has a proven track record of keeping wine stable, has allowed it to spread all across the old world from countries such as Germany, France and Italy as well as to the more adventurous new world from Australia, Argentina, Canada, Chile, the US, Japan, South Africa and more. But back to wine openers. The classic waiter's friend corkscrew, which is also known as a sommelier's knife, or any other adaptations to them, such as those with an inbuilt foil cutter, are really easy to use once you've grasped the basic techniques. And no, you do not need two people to open a bottle of wine with any of these. So I once read a complaint about a wine opener in an airline that I used to work for, where the staff wrote that they needed two people to open a bottle of wine, one person to hold the bottle and the other to pull the corkscrew out with the wine opener. Now, technology has made it easier for us to touch our noses like this, but some of the simple pleasures in life, such as holding a book in your hand and reading an actual letter whilst holding it, and you can actually see the person's handwriting. Some things are better when we touch our noses like this, and that's me with the use of a classic waiter's friend corkscrew. So wine openers come in all shapes and sizes, from your very basic pull and twist corkscrew, and this one's shaped like a moustache, but this would take a lot of effort to open a bottle of wine and it doesn't come with a blade or anything to help you cut the foil. Then the next step up would be what's my best friend and the bestie of a lot of wine drinkers worldwide would be something that's known as the waiter's friend corkscrew, which would pretty much do everything that you need to be able to open a bottle of wine. You have a blade over here, which is for you to cut the foil. And then this is what we call the corkscrew, also known as the worm, because it's shaped like a worm. And then there's this lever. And what the lever does is to rest on the lip of the bottle so that you can gently ease out the cork with minimal effort, as opposed to fighting with the cork by pulling it with this. And the second version of that is with um, two steps and that's supposed to help you ease up the cork even better but I find that when using the two-step lever if you're not careful you it's very likely that you would chip the lip of the bottle and then there's also something which is very convenient where they've incorporated a foil cutter so this makes cutting foils a lot easier and quicker and this is by a brand called Boomerang, which does very good wine openers and not particularly expensive. So I have a waiter's friend corkscrew, this one in particular, that's traveled the world with me for the past 21 years plus, 
I know please don't do the math because obviously when I started using this corkscrew I was of drinking age and you'll be able to tell my age. I do have to say that you do need to have a good quality one. This one has gotten a bit loose but I'll be able to use it for the rest of my life and they're not expensive even the good quality ones. You can get them still till date for as economically priced as 10 euros if not slightly less. Then there are various assorted wine openers for some of us who are lazier or those of us that don't want to fight with any corks and especially those for the elderly or those with limited mobility due to injuries to the wrists etc. So from electrical wine openers where you press a button and voila the cork is removed to pneumatic openers where you pump out the cork. Then there's also the lever type corkscrew where you insert the worm by depressing the lever and then you lift the lever up and it automatically pulls up the cork with minimal effort or force. All these wine openers can vary significantly in price, but they can be as economically priced as 10 euros to hundreds of euros if you go for super premium brands such as Le Creuset, which are known for their Dutch ovens. Now, for those of you who are fans of fine vintage wines, or you have to deal with crumbly corks frequently, then the Asso is going to be your best Friend. So if you find yourself in a situation where your cork has broken partially and it's now stuck in the middle of the neck of the bottle, then if you use the ASO properly, you will be able to extract the rest of the cork. And no, I'm not crazy. It really is originally known as the ASO or from the German AKSO. The Japanese will say SO DES NE because Oh, I see. So the ASO is a two sharp pronged gadget where the prongs would fit in between the cork and the bottle. So this is not the original cork for this bottle of almond liqueur, but I just wanted to illustrate how this is used. And once you fitted the prongs in, one side of the prong is longer than the other to help you put the longer side in and then wedge the shorter side in. And then you slowly twist and pull the cork out, as you can see. And this gadget in particular that I have is known as the Durand, which is an American patent, is not particularly cheap. It costs approximately 150 euros thereabouts. But the beauty of it is that it incorporates the regular corkscrew with the ASO, making it a lot easier and more secure to take these crumbly fine vintage wine corks out. And then I also wanted to quickly touch on sparkling wine bottle openers such as this one that's from Le Creuset and this is a cork from a sparkling wine and that's the mucilette which is the wire seal and you're supposed to remove the mucilette and you can see there are four indentations where this would fit within the four indentations and it helps you to pull the cork out. Now in my personal opinion, this gadget uh, is completely unnecessary. I wouldn't use it. This was actually a gift from someone. And one of the main reasons for this is if you watch my video, how to open a bottle of sparkling wine, I would never ever remove the mucilet entirely because I love my eyes and my body parts. I don't want to be blinded or to injure myself or anyone else. And in order to open a bottle of sparkling wine safely, you should always hold on to the mucilet and you don't actually pull the cork. That's the greatest mistake that most people do. And that's why people struggle to open sparkling wines. You twist the bottle. Simple as that. That is the one and only trick. If you need to learn about opening sparkling wines that you need to know, it is to twist the bottle, nothing else. Number two on the list is a foil cutter. Now it's not really an essential for me because I rely on my waiter's friend and the blade pretty much does everything. But there's a main difference when you use a foil cutter versus a blade. 
traditionally, and this is what you see uh, in bars and restaurants if they're trained appropriately, that they would cut here below the lip of the bottle. And the reason for this traditionally is that the capsules used to contain lead in it. And if they were to cut on the upper part over here, then the wine could potentially come in contact with the foil and there were fears of lead poisoning as you were to pour the wine. Now with the foil cutter, it's only as broad as to fit the top part of the lip. So you can't cut underneath the lip and you simply twist and there you go. Clean cut, well, nearly. And this is very useful for people who tend to struggle with cutting the foil tidily. And they come, I'm just talking about the foil cutter, not this. They usually come as economically priced as two euros or even less. Number three on the list would be wine glasses. Now, wine glasses are not created equal. Depending on the materials that they're made from, they can allow you to smell better, which in turn allows you to taste more because our sense of taste is greatly dependent on our sense of smell. And very importantly, I simply love the sound of glasses clinking when they're of the right quality. That's how wine glasses should sound. Drinking wine from a mug or any other vessels versus using an actual wine glass makes a huge difference. If you'd like to learn about the different wine glasses and why they matter, I'll leave a link to my video up here, Differences in Wine Glasses. If I could, I'd have a set of four different wine glasses, one for sparkling wines, one for reds, one for non-reds that would cover your whites, rosés and anything else in between, and one for fortified slash dessert wines as well as certain spirits such as grappa. If on the other hand, I can only have one set of glasses, perhaps due to space constraint, then I would go for the red wine glass, but I'd opt for a smaller version like this one, which came from Ikea, by the way, uh, not particularly sturdy, but does the trick uh, as opposed to those that are for Cabernet Sauvignons, which tend to be even larger bold and larger rimmed. And the reason for that is I love to smell my wines, even sparkling wines. And if you've watched my video, the differences in wine glasses, the reason why sparkling wine flutes are long and narrow is so that it helps to retain the bubbles. I would prefer to pour smaller volumes into a larger bowl where I would be able to smell the sparkling wine a lot better, especially if they are better quality sparkling wines such as Champagne, Franciacorta or Method Cat Classics from South Africa. And I'd much rather pour smaller portions um, so that the bubbles don't fizz out. And one of my favourite wine glass brands simply has to be Rydell. So whilst I was doing some research for this video on brands and images, I looked on their site and they even come up with glasses with stems for an espresso tasting. How awesome is that? And then I simply have to show you this, which I nearly forgot. So I've got very sensitive teeth. And in my previous job with um, the airline that I was with, whenever I was visiting wine trade fairs, I'd taste a hundred of wines a day. I know it sounds crazy or even slightly more, but of course I was spitting and, you know, you need to have a good dental plan. That was my joke because, you know, wines are very abrasive because of the acidity and alcohol levels. So I got this because I didn't want to stain my teeth and I didn't want the wine to be as abrasive. So you just suck it up. It's just like how I drink my coffee with a straw, but it takes away some of the fun in drinking wines because when it comes to great wines or good wines, you want to be able to really mush the wine around your entire mouth and coat everything because it's only then that you get all of the different textures and the full effects of the wine and flavors. So this is really fun to play around with sometimes um, if you're just drinking cheap and cheerful wines, but for more serious wines, eh, not this. Number four on the list would be a wine pump 
and stoppers, which to me are completely essential unless you're the kind who never leave any wine left. As you can see, this bottle of wine is already stoppered with one of these rubber stoppers. I've had this open for more than a week now. And oh, okay, so let's see whether you can hear anything. Did you hear that? Right, so that was the air, right? And all you do is you stop it with the cork and you pump it. And you'll be able to feel the resistance as the air is pumped out. And that's it. Now, depending on the quality of the rubber stoppers and the climate where you're at. So I'm in the north of Portugal where it's climatically significantly cooler. And I've had some wine bottles, not this one, that have been open for three weeks, but stop it with these stoppers. So this one is from Le Crozet. It was a gift from a friend. Thank you very much, Ifa. And these were some of the replacement stoppers that I got because I tend to have several bottles open at any given time. I'm one of those people who, you know, want a glass of this, want a glass of that, you know, so I need my wine stoppers and wine pump. So with those bottles that were open for three weeks, they were still pretty fresh. They had deteriorated slightly, but not too much. Number five on the list is a Coravan. Now, this will be your best friend if you enjoy drinking expensive wines, but you don't drink them all in one go. And this was one of my best friends when I was pursuing my Wine and Spirit Education Trust Level 4 Diploma because I had to taste certain wines which were quite expensive and I definitely didn't want to drink the entire bottle. So once you've opened a regular bottle of wine and without any other conservation methods, forget the pump, forget the rubber stoppers, you recork it and you put it in the fridge, uh, at best after two days, you're going to realize that the wine has deteriorated quite a bit, again, depending climatically on where you're at. So using the Coravan, you do not remove the cork. You do not open the bottle of wine at all. So the Coravan is a pressurized gadget. So I'm going to show you that uses Argan gas. These are the cartridges and you need to buy replacement cartridges and you screw it on. And there's a needle over here. And to use the Coravan, you first depress this lever, which makes sure that it flushes out any remaining air. You can hear that. And then you squeeze onto the butterfly wings. And with a quick rapid movement, the needle goes in. And you depress this. So as the wine is poured, what's being replaced in the empty space in the bottle is pure argon gas. And that was what was in the cartridge. And then all we do is just lift it up and that's it. And the rest of the contents in the wine bottle will live for as long as it was intended to live. Now, you may be wondering why I say that both the Coravan and the wine pump and stoppers are essentials because why use the wine pump and rubber stoppers when you can use this? And the whole reason for that is because these cartridges are expensive. On average, each of these cartridge would give you 15 to a maximum of 22 pours, depending on the size of the pours. And on average, you're going to be paying 50 euro cents per pour. So that actually comes up to quite a bit. And if the wine is not particularly expensive or I'm planning on consuming the wine within the next two days, then why use the Coravan? Number six on the list would be a decanter. Now, if you're used to entertaining people at home with good and fine wines, then you definitely need a decanter. But don't go rushing out to the stores to buy one unless you actually want one because most likely you've got something in the kitchen that you can use to do the trick. Now, all wines can benefit from some oxygen, but not all wines need to be decanted. If you'd like to learn about why wines need to breathe, do check out the video where I'll be leaving the link up here. Decanters come in all shapes and sizes, and the reality is the prettiest ones are merely 
candy for our eyes because everyone loves pretty things. Any glass vessel that is larger than a wine bottle and has a larger opening than a wine bottle's mouth will do the trick of aerating the wine. As an example, a simple water jug would do. If you really want to buy a decanter, they can be as economically priced as 10 euros or less, or you can spend hundreds of euros um, if you really want to buy crystal ones. Do bear in mind that the more eclectic the shape is, the more difficult they are to clean, especially the U-shaped bugle ones, which I've learned through experience. Number seven on the list would be wine pourers and discs, which would be ideal for those of us with shaky hands, where we tend to get more wine on the tabletop or the glass rather than inside the glass. So this is a wine disc. It's like an aluminum foil. And all you do is you roll it up. That's what wine pumping does. And you fit it in and you pour with no drips, zero drips. And of course, there are other wine pourers. That's another wine pourer over here, which is also supposed to do the trick. But obviously, the wine discs work really well because you can carry them anywhere. See, no spills. Of course, there are tricks to pouring wines. And if you've actually noticed the sommeliers or waiters in your better class restaurants, you would have noticed that they always twist at the end and hold it. See? No drips. That's it. So you don't need a wine pourer, but if you're not great at it and you're still practicing, then carry these wine discs with you. They're really cheap. Then there are also measured pourers, which pour 30 or 60 milliliters at a time. And you would have most likely seen them in bars on top of spirits bottles. Now, I used to teach Wine and Spirit Education Trust certifications to the cabin crew for the airline that I worked with and that included wine tastings. And we never left it to the cabin crew to pour their wines because some of them were very cheeky and they pour themselves a full glass. So we'd only have limited bottles of wine per training session, let's say for 20 pupils. And that one bottle needed to last everyone for 20 people plus the trainer, myself, let's say. And with those measured pourers, it would have been very easy to measure out those 30 milliliters. Number eight on the list would be wine sleeves or canisters to keep your whites and rosés chilled. Now these are super handy. You pop them into the freezer, make sure they're really chilled. And especially if you're dining outside al fresco uh, or want to avoid having to go to the fridge back and forth to pop the bottle in and out, then they help to keep your wines nice and chilled. Of course, using an ice bucket filled with ice and water would be an even better option, but that's not particularly mobile or convenient. Number nine on the list has to be reusable chilling cubes. Now, the ones that I have come in fruit shapes and they're usually filled with distilled water, so they're completely harmless. You pop them into the freezer and they're for people like me. So. For example, if I've forgotten to chill a bottle of white wine and I desperately want a glass of white wine and I don't really want to wait, then I pop open the bottle, pop a few of these in, which are great because you won't use regular ice cubes because they would dilute the wine. These would only chill the wine down um, in the glass. So you don't, you probably need maybe three or four cubes, depending on how big the wine glass is, and then keep refilling it. That's it. Number 10 on the list is wine trinkets. Now, these are very useful and fun to have, especially if you tend to have a lot of people over in your house and you don't want the glasses to get mixed up. You know, last thing you want to do is going to be hunting around for whoever's hue of lipstick to say, oh, this is your glass and it's not mine. So a lot of these wine trinkets are to be attached on the stems of the glass and they come in all shapes and sizes. And again, you don't have to spend money buying these trinkets. You could actually use dried fruit or fresh fruit that you cut in different shapes and you put them on the rims of the glasses, especially if you've got stemless wine glasses. And that brings us to the end of essential gadgets to have. As always, please do feel free to send me a private message if you have any questions or clarifications. Do show your support by hitting the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment on this video and share it. Until next Saturday, 
Here's to amazing health. Thank you.